Okay, great. So we're recording now, and can we start um, by just having everyone agree that we can use share this video publicly with a thumbs up or a verbal yes? Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Um, okay, cool. So first, before we dive into the meeting, I just want to you know really take a moment to honor and appreciate and thank Katie for agreeing to lead the team this week and diving right in. And I'm super excited to have Katie, you know, bringing all the ways that she's been, you know, leading the way for us in all of these different aspects of our research team to now be, you know, leading for this week, which is really awesome. And I think it's a really great week because you guys have been um, doing a great job. You've been on top of everything and we're really, um, you know, pulling everything together for the FDA advisory committee meeting again, which we did a great job of last week. And this week we get to take it to a whole nother level, which is, you know, what I'm excited about and why we're doing this, you know, is that we are able, we did everything we did last week to get us to here. And we do so much heavy lifting and so much learning. And now that we're here, now we can use this week to just go up here. So it's really great that we have that opportunity Thank you, Sabah. Great to have you here, Sabah. Thank you, Sabah, for going ahead and actually leading another presentation, which is really amazing that Sabah is, is going ahead and um, doing, you know, taking the lead on presenting and sharing with you guys the script and all of that. So that's amazing. Thank you, Sabah. You want to say anything about that, Sabah? Yeah. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Do you want me to say anything about that? What's that? You want me to say anything about the proposal? Not, not at this point. Well, I know Katie will get to it in the agenda, but I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for stepping up and agreeing to do that. That's really great. And, um, you know, I just want to thank everybody on the team for all the ways that you guys have been contributing and stepping up and stepping in and short notice and doing things. And this week we're going to do our best in this meeting to really um, outline what everyone's going to be doing really specifically so we can be really you know intentional in everything we do and and maximum productivity for the week so i'm really excited for us to tune in on a higher level and operate on a higher level together this is really great that we're getting to do this and so with that let me just give you guys a round of applause thank you and yes everybody can applause everybody for sure you guys deserve it absolutely and let's go ahead and Hand it off to Katie. Thank you, Katie. Take it away. All right. I'll go ahead and pull up the agenda. Okay, can you see that? Yep. All right, cool. So I guess uh, first we'll go over our major priority that we have for the week. This is what we want to get done as soon as possible so we can go ahead and contact these uh, experts. But uh, I talked a little bit about this in the chat. So we are going to focus most of our attention on getting experts that will uh, support the FDA presentation. So this means people that are focused on kids and the vaccine approval for children. So looking at like pediatricians and uh, people who uh, uh, specify in children health. Uh, so what Jared and I were talking about is, uh, you know, you went in and uh, put your hours that you have for today, tomorrow, and Thursday. And so what we want you to do is to take that time that you have in the day and basically divide this into three, and it's going to be a, a cycle. So first, what you're going to do is you're going to get your articles. You're going to put them into the system. And what we want you to do for now is to go ahead and just mark it at, under the population children. And that's all you need to do to tag this week. Uh, we'll go in again later and get more specific, but for right now, uh, in the interest of time, just go ahead and leave it at uh, population children. And so after you spend about a third of your time doing that, the next step is to pull those experts out and put them into the system. And then the next step your next third is going to be getting the contact info for those experts. And then once you're done with that, you're going to cycle for as many times as you're able. Uh, and then we want, I think we were settled at 
200 about? Is that the right number, Jared? Yeah, I think, again, we'll see how the numbers are playing out as we're collecting them. But I believe that that's going to be a good number for the amount of hours that we have for the week. Mm -hmm. And well, we also uh, talked about um, you going for an hour, well, uh, I guess us going for an hour and then um, documenting how many we got and try to keep with that pace. Do you still want us to do that? Yeah, for sure. And it's going to kind of depend again on how many hours you have in a day, but you know, maybe you're going to be documenting each for a half hour or something like that, but whatever it is, what we should do is just calculate an hourly figure out of whatever fraction of an hour you're, you're tracking from. So, um, but you know, if we want to make it easy on people, maybe we say like a half hour and track for a half hour each. So I think that's probably a good measurement. Everybody can do the same. So half hour, the first half hour, the second half hour, the third, and measure the results you're getting for each, each third. Okay. And actually that's, I thought about during the afternoon, I didn't set it up and I didn't get a chance to talk to you about it, but I think we can set up a spreadsheet in the uh, meeting tonight where we're like tracking that so that everybody can just put those figures in, you know, for themselves of what their, what their metrics were for each of those. Okay. Um, and I guess other than that, uh, if you have extra time during the weekend or at the very end of the week, uh, you can go ahead and use that to go back and add contact info for the ones that you already put in. So any questions? <laughs> The, to, just to let everybody know, I'm actually going to do a, um, a short tutorial in the meeting today of what Katie just said. So we will actually do a walkthrough of all of it. So it's so everybody can see it live and ask any questions and all of that still. So, but and just conceptually, any questions or anything for Katie? Okay. Uh, Okay, and that, next we're gonna go over Sabah's FDA presentation. Uh, we're gonna review the poll questions that I think Johnny has been coming up with. Um, we're gonna go over what we're gonna do about that. And um, I guess divide our time figuring out how we're gonna best support Sabah. Uh, I guess that's the overview. Yeah, great, great. Thank you for going through all of that. Katie and just walking us through everything. Um, so perfect. So um, where would you like to start? Would you like me to do the tutorial of what we just went over? Would that be easiest? I think so, yeah. Okay, great. So, okay. Any questions before I dive in with this? It's gonna be a bit of a refresher for you guys. Well, new for Johnny, but a refresher for you guys. Um, yeah, now's the, now's the time if you're able to see. Are you you're still driving, Alexis? You'll be able you'll be able to look at the watch the video later. Definitely don't watch the video now. <laughs> and Renasia, if you're able to watch the screen now, that's great. Or if not later, so I'm gonna go right into what we've been familiar with in terms of our interface to um, the uniting for action system. Let me copy this real quick. Okay, so actually I'll do it this way. So it looks, it looks different now because last time you saw it, it had a whole bunch of stuff all the way down. And what I did to make it easy is I took away all of the other articles that we've been working on, all the booster articles and everything for now. So we're starting with a fresh slate just so we can focus on what we're doing this week. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with the very first article that you're entering, okay? So this is the first one that I found. So blank slate, add new article. Any questions to this point? Does everybody kind of recognize this without all the stuff that we usually see? So first thing, add new article. So then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna paste in the link of whatever you collected. And like Katie said, this is action number one. So we're gonna like set up some kind of 
form that shows step-by-step -step action number one. And this is action number one because action number one is just entering articles and that's the entirety of that action. And anybody can keep doing that repeatedly and that's one specific action, that's a defined action. Then we get to action number two, which is when we're actually pulling the experts out of the article, a totally separate type of function. Does everybody see that? Because these are like the building blocks that we're going to start to kind of teach society around how you break down complex tasks into simple tasks. And so that's what we're modeling for people. So we've got the source. This is where, if it's not your name already, change it to your name so that it records that you're entering this um, article. So that's important, so it's tracked to you. And then go ahead and hit add. So once you do that, the link you submitted has been successfully added. There's the link. There's the entered date and time. It was entered by me. We're not, well, actually, I'm gonna do a little bit of an update to what Katie said on the processing. So on the processing, as she said, the population group children so that is the only um you know one we have to do and we have to scroll down a little bit and then we get to ages and then we get to children so you're going to select children but then the other one you're going to select down at the bottom is the vaccines by type you're going to select pfizer so this is both uh you know tagged for pfizer vaccine because that's the one being considered as well as the children and then again, you're gonna make sure that here it says your name. So it could be anybody's name, but you wanna make sure it says your name. Once you do it the first time, it should remember if you have cookies available on your computer, it'll remember that it's you after you do it the first time. Um, so then you go ahead and hit update. And by the way, that I just wanna clarify that because I know sometimes some people in the past thought that when they showed up because it was their name that it was mislabeling it, but it's actually, it just remembers that it's you so you don't have to reset it every time you do this. So that's it. So then you hit update. And once you hit update, now it's been tagged the way it needs to. Now it's gonna go into that channel. So the channel for children, um, you know, X with uh, Pfizer vaccine, you know, that'll be that channel. And then we go to experts, okay? So again, you've done this part of it, but just walking everybody through it one more time. So you go to experts, there's no experts listed yet, okay? Gives us the link right here so we can click on the link so we can go back into the article to find the experts. So we scroll through. <clears throat> we scroll through the article looking for the experts. So again, this is action number two, looking for experts. So here's Dr. Walid Galed, okay, a drug safety expert at the University of Pittsburgh, okay? So I find Dr. Walid and then I go back in and this is where I click add expert, okay? So now I click add expert and now that I'm clicking add expert, this is where I go ahead and paste his name. So I've got Dr. Walid Galed. Um, pronouncing it correctly. Um, okay, once again, in this case, we can say, since we found him in this article related to children and, um, you know, the vaccine, we'll just label it that way at this point. As I'm thinking about it, well, we won't know that they're specific for children, but we'll ha it'll have to do. We're not gonna go into any more depth of like, um, reading the articles in depth and tagging and all of that. I wanna make a point of that because I know that some of you could do that accidentally and could spend a bit of time tagging these articles. We're not spending time tagging these articles. Does everybody get that? Let me actually get a thumbs up from everybody on that just to make sure that everybody's getting that. That's an important point. So we're not tagging these articles. Renasia, can I get a thumbs up from you on that? Did you catch that? Okay, great. Yeah. So we're not tagging these articles other than just um, children, Pfizer. Those are the only tags. Don't worry about doing any other tags because because we're not focusing on tags right now. Right now, we're just focusing on pulling the experts out and tags will just slow us down from that. So I've got his name. Now that I've got his name, now I'm just going to go ahead and do a search on Google for him. And then 
you know, I did this before, so I happen to know when I click on this link that it's going to give me his profile, and here's his email right here. So jackpot, first try email, great. Okay, so we copy his email, and then we go back in and we add email. Now this part is important, so once again, everybody pay particular attention. We want to know what the email source link was because we, if we want to go back to this page, we want to know where we found his email. So we go and grab this web page, the web page where we found the email, and we call that the email source link, the link to where we got the email from. If there's any notes, if there's any reason to say any notes about it, you can. And we're, we're going to go probably too fast to be doing much of that in this case. but. The one thing that I saw here, just to show you, we're the, almost the only thing we care about is email because we want to email them. We are interested in the phone number as well because we could always call them to get an email or talk to them. So for sure, grab the phone number and the email. Has everybody got that? Those are the two primary, phone number and email. The only other time you're going to do something is if it's like sitting here. you know. So he's got his Twitter like right here. So I'll just go ahead and grab it because it's in my face and it's there. But don't do any searching or anything out of the way to go find anything, just you know, if it's right there. Um, but the one thing that I did do, actually, um, just to show you, you know what, it's, it's enough. We've got enough for him. So here he's got all his different things. I'm just going to put that he's the um, director for the Center for Pharmaceutical Policy and Prescribing. So we put him here. So the affiliation is the Center for Pharmaceutical. He's the director. So that's enough for now. We don't need to get into all the other stuff. Even just his name is enough. You don't even. Maybe we shouldn't even do the director and affiliation. Let me think about that. Yeah, I would say that's just going to be extraneous at this point. So don't even collect that information. I think, you know what, I think at this point, don't even, don't even collect the Twitter either. That's just going to slow us down. The only thing that we care about right now is the name and the, is the phone number and the email. And put the source of it so then we can track our way back and find some of the other information later when we want to. Okay? That makes sense to everybody? So that's pretty much it. So it's just name, email, phone, email source, phone source. That's it. You guys got it? And at this point, since I've got the email, I'm not even going to keep trying to search to find his phone number. I would say once you find the first one, whether it's an email or a phone number, probably enough to stop there. I, I would say if you find the phone number first, maybe search for the email. But if you find the email search, don't first don't search for the phone number because the phone number is probably going to be harder. So does that make sense to everybody? I know that's a little bit nuanced, but I want to, again, we're just trying to be very efficient with our time because we want to crank. We, like Katie said, we want to input not only not only find and and, uh, and get the contact information, but actually reach out to 200 experts over the next few days if we can. So it's a pretty ambitious target. Um, so that's it. Name, phone number, email address. Again, make sure that it's your name here We're for updated. And then I'm going to hit add. So before I hit add, any questions about anything we're looking at here, anything I did on the screen? Everybody good? So um, so now I'm going to hit add. Oh, the chat at the last minute. Could you please share the link with us? Yes, I will share the link with you. So now the expert has been successfully added. So that's it. So it's, he's been successfully added. You know, when you scroll down here, it's still checkmarked. You know, the tags that you checkmarked and all the information is still there. You could update it if you need to. Um, here's the information source link that got saved. Then we just go ahead and return to the articles list. 
and then we're back here where we started. So this is the link that you're just asking for, Sabah. This is the, the admin link, basically. Okay, so, um, so then uh, that's the entirety of it, because again, first, you're putting the articles in, second, you're taking the experts out of the articles, third, you're adding the contact information for the experts. And that's the end-to-end -end solution that we're looking for. Then all of those contacts are going to be going directly to the outreach team this week so that we can be sending emails to all of these experts to see if we can get them to reply to the poll that we're going to talk about in a little bit, um, you know, and perhaps get some other information from them and maybe shoot a video with them or have them be a part of a panel or, you know, who knows what it's going to be, but that's what we're going to be. Um, you know, connecting with them about. So any questions about anything I just shared? Any comments? All of that really clear to everybody? Yeah, can I get a thumbs up from everybody that's clear? It's all clear? Is that a... Thumbs up, Renee. Okay, great. Is that a thumbs up, Alexis? <laughs> yeah, okay, great. Okay, excellent. So, so that's it, and that's what we're going to... So what... Um, so the other part of this is just like the extreme tracking that we're going to do on this so that we can really, you know, be in tune with how fast we're making progress so we can change our target if we need to. Like Katie said... Excuse me. She and I did some rough calculations today to determine that maybe it would take about 24 hours of work to do everything we just talked about, 24 people hours, to do all of the um, collection of the articles and the pulling out of the experts and the finding of the contact information for 200 experts. So, but if you guys end up going twice as fast as that, then, you know, we'll finish in half the time, but we'll know that pretty quickly because we'll start to see what your pacing is. Does that make sense? So, so what we'll do is, let's do it now just really quickly, is to create this document. So let's go into the research team. Where should we even do this? We're in our fall research, I suppose. And boosters research, I guess we're going to say children's. Well, actually, we're gonna, let's do a folder. So, children. Says vaccine. Vaccine for children. Who's doing the minutes this week? That's a good catch, Katie. You want to uh, get that squared away? Who normally does the minutes for the research team? I always get it mixed up. It's been fluid. The last uh, two weeks were Sabah. Um, I can I think do, um, do this week. We'll do it, Johnny. Thank yes. you. Great. Thanks, Johnny. Um, okay, so okay, so this document, what are we going to call this? Let's call it um, <clears throat> expert um, metrics. I don't know what to call it. Metrics. Um, 
I'm open to a different title. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have, so action one, So this is um, entering articles. This is where actually you probably want to be cautious about not spending a whole third of your time entering articles because you could probably enter way more than you can process. I don't know. You'll have you'll have to figure it out actually. Well, once you do the first half hour, then you'll see how much of it you get to process. So you can go you can go all out for the first half hour if you want. So entering articles and then. Um, basically, you know, we're going to say 30 minutes. How many articles? And okay. So that's the first number that you're going to collect. So you're really going to put yourself on the stopwatch when you do this. You're going to start, you're going to make sure at the end of 30 minutes, you're going to stop and you're going to look and see how many, how many links did I just enter into the system? How many articles did I just enter? And that includes the searching, by the way. So it's not like you go out and search and find all these articles and then you come and just enter, 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 enter. This is like you going and do a search and look and try to find articles out there and see like how many articles you enter while you're searching for articles. Okay, is that clear to everybody? I think that's important detail to mention. Any questions about that? So you're going to Google, you're going wherever you're saying, you know, children's COVID vaccine or whatever you're searching for. You're finding the articles, you're entering them. After 30 minutes, you say, how many articles have I entered? And then action two is um, pulling experts out of articles. And then again, you're going to do that for 30 minutes. And then you're going to say how many experts um, entered. Okay, and you're going to take that number as well. And then, um, action number three, then you're going to find contact information. Once again, for 30 minutes. And then, how many, um, I don't know how to describe this. How many experts do we find contact information for? I guess that's just the way we say it. How many experts found contact info? So that, that could be a phone number or an email address or both. We'll, I'll, I'll figure out a way to show you easily on the screen. But basically, and I'm drinking, as I'm saying all this, I'm trying to figure out ways that we can actually collect that data behind the scenes so you don't actually have to write it in, that I can just kind of computationally figure it out based on the timestamps of you like entering stuff. But for now, let's just have you, you know, collect this information. So then what you're going to do is as soon as you're done with your first, you know, hour and a half, then what you're going to do is you're going to send a message into the chat and you're just going to simply say um, number one and then you're going to say how many articles entered. So let's just say 16 as an example and then number two and then we should actually make we should actually make a, um, a spreadsheet for this. So rather than put it into the chat, let's just make this spreadsheet really quickly. So let's actually use our team hours. So here we are. So let's go here for action. Let's see. We don't need these two. Okay, so now we'll have action number one. 
So now again, what you're going to enter in each of these columns are your results after 30 minutes, after the after 30 minutes is really where you want to be with it. So is everyone clear about that? Clear about the action? I'm going to actually paste the, uh, the actual actions into this document so they're handy here, but let's go and get them so we've got them. So any questions about any of what I've been doing with this? Okay, so entering articles, once you're done with 30 minutes, you'll put how many articles you've entered right there. And then once you're done with 30 minutes of pulling experts out of articles, how many experts you entered, you'll put next to your name under the action two column. And then once you're done with 30 minutes of finding the contact information, then you, how many, however many experts you found contact info for, you'll put that in column three on the same line as your name. So is everybody clear about that, how we're going to collect these metrics? And then that way we can go in here, Katie and I, and really anybody, we can all see that we can start to do some calculations based on what people's metrics are. And we're going to be able to figure out, you know, how long it's going to take us to hit 100 experts or how long it's going to hit a, take us to hit 200 experts or something like that. Or, or also we'll say something like, you know, use only half as much time for action one as you're spending on action two. Like for every 15 minutes you put into action one, you should put 30 minutes into action two and then 45 minutes into action three or something like that. We'll be able to figure those things out as well. So is everybody really clear about that? And that's going to start to be like what the model looks like for us as we start to use Slack or tracking time or whatever. It's, it's collecting this type of information so that we can do this predictive modeling of how we can get a uh, task done like we've talked about in the past. So does that make sense to everybody? Any questions about any of that? You guys see how this is pretty like cutting edge stuff that we're talking about, right? With being able to do this, you know, tracking and breaking everything down. And this is forming the foundation of, a, of the bigger picture things that we're talking about. If you guys, if any of you haven't watched the top five breakthroughs video yet, you have to watch it. <laughs> um, I've talked for quite a bit. Any questions or comments or anything about any of that? Okay, otherwise I think what I'm going to do is, is take a pause so that we can maybe do another portion. Um, I don't know if, where you want to throw it to, Katie, now I'll leave it in your court. Either have Sabah talk a little bit about the presentation and us supporting Sabah with the presentation and the editing and all of that. Um, or I, I forget what else is on the agenda. I'll leave it, I'll leave it up to you, Katie, where you want to go from here. I guess we can start with Sabah talking about our presentation and uh, figuring out how we can best assist, and then we can go into Johnny's poll questions. Great. Uh, yeah, I'll start by saying that, um, as we all know that uh, young children are at higher risk with the Delta variant. So uh, we have a lot of school going uh, children in that age group who are going there and who are not yet vaccinated and getting exposed to COVID-19. With the Delta variant, we also learn that kids are not immune to COVID. And as the variants come, they will continue, um, there will be continue to be concern, increased concern. It's not like it's a brand new vaccine or it's not like it's brand new technology. It's still going to be the same Pfizer vaccine or same mRNA formula. It's just um, because it's a third of a dose when they mix it with diluent and draw it up into the vial. Uh, it's just a little bit different. It's pretty technical, but it's just about like um, the volume of additional liquid, the diluent, the slime, you know, uh, that it's, it, get, it gets pulled up. Um, and I read from the um, research articles that Pfizer said this, uh, uh, that it has submitted data to 
EU's uh, medicine regulator for the approval of the coronavirus vaccine for children is 5 to 11, uh, following a similar step here in US too. The vaccine uh, makers announced last ma month the trial results has shown the jab was safe and created robust immune response in that age group. So yeah, with my proposal, I would like to take this in a direction which assess the safety of the vaccine. Yeah, it's really great, Sabah. Thank you for sharing all of that and for being so interested in pulling all the information together and presenting it. It's really awesome and we really commend you for that. It's really, really great. So, um, you know, the one thing I want to share with everybody is I think, you know, we've been talking about how um, Sabah and myself and anybody who's presenting, you know, are going to have this disclaimer in the front, like we've talked about, where, you know, our views are our own and not necessarily shared by the Vaccine Considerations Project, which maintains its neutrality. So that's, uh, you know, as you could hear, Sabah is essentially, you know, advocating for the use of the vaccine and making an argument for it. And, you know, we're, we're allowing Sabah to share what she wants to share, just like we've talked about um, over the past week. We talked about the team meeting last week, um, where we all agreed that we were open to the um, neutrality through, inclusive, through inclusiveness of different ideas and different viewpoints and allowing people to feel self-expressed and expressing whatever they want. So this is, uh, you know, we consider an example of that. So does anybody have any questions about that or any concerns? Okay, great, great. So again, where Sabah is at right now, we shared, um, you know, the draft into the chat earlier today and, um, you know, offered an opportunity to, um, to put comments on it. I haven't looked myself since then, so we can look together right now to see if anybody's um, added any comments. So here is the document. Okay, so the deadline for this is um, midnight tonight. So Katie's added a couple comments, which is in terms of uh, presentation grammar there. And then that's it for comments so far. So the whole team, you guys have opportunity. Okay, great. So I just added the, or shared the, the document link. So for any of you, as soon as we're done with this meeting that want to provide any input for Sabah, this is some version of this is what she's going to be emailing to the FDA tonight. Um, and I'm going to be sending an email, you know, with my application for essentially a different flavor of what I shared last time. So I'm still going to go back to my concerns about the procedural issues. I'm going to do my best to be a bit more diplomatic and a bit more um, uh, evidence based around it. I just kind of felt just to let you guys know, you know, after the presentation, I was really asking myself if I really, um, if I really was striking the proper tone and, and coming across exactly the way that I wanted to. I think that in the moment, what was happening is um, I, I didn't realize how much the um, having, um, having Katie's presentation with mine and the introduction and all of that was going to cut down on the amount of time that I had to present. And so when I was preparing the presentation and realized I only had like two minutes to present that I, I that I could only that I could only talk about like that one thing. And even with that, I could only make it like really short and sharp. So I made it like as sharp as I could. I think at this point, some of you have heard me say this, that I want to really just pose it to them, pose it to the FTA. FDA is, um, they, they clearly want people to trust them, right? That's a popular refrain, trust the FDA. I want to trust the FDA. I stuck 
you know, this needle in my arm. I got the vaccine, you know, the two doses. I personally am following their recommendations and all of that sort of stuff. So, you know, everybody who, um, you know, wants to trust the FDA, which is all of us, basically, if we all want to have trust in the FDA, then wouldn't the FDA want to do everything they could to give all appearances of trust and confidence? And when they are repeatedly meeting after meeting for more than a year, using a process that procedurally just um, doesn't allow the whole scientific community across the country to even digest the data and absorb it and have a conversation about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually provide an alternative. I forgot, now's a very good time for us to talk about this. I'm glad I'm thinking about it. What I'm imagining, and let me hear your guys' thoughts. What I'm imagining is that we're going to model for the FDA what their process could look like. And what we're going to do is we're going to essentially provide like two weeks from the release of the data. We're going to go through a like community like digestion process with all of the experts out in the country that we can you know, interact with and invite them to share their thoughts and their concerns and have like an open forum and ask questions and allow people to ask questions of them and answer questions and, and set up like a couple of town halls, like one each week, if we can, if we can have enough you know, expert participation. And then at the end of the two weeks, then do our own kind of like advisory council kind of, you know, format where we're, you know, asking different questions and, and having the experts sit on the advisory panel offering question, you know, answers and all that. So we, we need to kind of suss it out a little bit more and it's going to get co-created with the experts. But this is my vision is instead of just telling the FDA what you're doing is not, you know, a good way to do things to actually instead just say, here's what we think is a better, more inclusive, more robust, more challenging, more whatever, you know, way of doing things. And of course, you guys know, you know, a lot of you being scientists, all of you here being scientists, um, that the um, challenge is the big part of science, right? Challenging things, challenging assumptions, challenging hypotheses. I mean, science is based on challenge, right? The only way you prove things is by challenging what you're trying to prove, right? So again, for them to go through this whole process without inviting the challenge of the public, it, it makes you wonder, not only what do they have to hide, you know, if they're trying to hide something, but what are they afraid of? What are the concerns that they don't, that they feel inadequate to address those concerns in a sense, right? That, that organizationally, they are overcome by the concern so much that they avoid the, they avoid the process rather than feel confident that they can confidently answer and confidently share with the public, you know, why the public can trust all of this. You get what I'm saying? Like they're undermining their own trust through this process clearly. And they could clearly be much more trusted with a much more thorough and trustworthy process. So again, I'm gonna do my best to um, share that in a more diplomatic and more um, concerned type of what's the disconnect between the desire for trust and then following a pattern that would look exactly like what an organization would do that wouldn't want to face scrutiny. An organization that wouldn't want to face scrutiny would follow their pattern to a T. So why are they patterning after something like that? That doesn't send a good signal to us, the public. Right. So that's essentially what I'll be presenting, you know, if they'll have me again. So any questions about that? I have a quick question. Uh, so uh, for your, your model that you were just talking about would be be like running parallel to the FDA. So we would do the same topic as they're doing, just showing like, hey, this is a different way. Or would we be coming up with our own topic and being like, hey, here's an example for the next time? Exactly. Yeah, that's perfect, Katie. I'm glad you're saying that. So yes. So for this time, we're going to do it exactly right. We're going to do this kids vaccine and everything. 
and we're going to give you know all the experts out there in the community these you know couple weeks to really digest this and read articles themselves and come up with their own thoughtful you know conclusions and then you know compose a video or be a part of a panel or whatever where they share what they have come to the conclusion of and they can share their work and they can also share that it was necessary for them to have a little bit of time to digest all of this and and then you know and again to start to get some of the editorials from the the experts about how you know they would prefer a more inclusionary type of process or you know again for us to set a standard that looks like what people feel better about you know then we pull the public which which process seems better to you in the end what we're ending up doing and i i just i'll end with this because i i know we're getting near the end of the meeting is that um we can look at it this way this is this is a little forward thinking. I'm going to ask each of you to tune in and get ready to stretch your minds a little bit. Okay. We're all um, looking for the FDA to show up as an agency that we can trust that's evaluating things for us, that we can feel secure about their evaluation. And then we can go ahead and just, you know, follow their recommendations because we feel secure about it. So, you know, some of us, including myself, I'm concerned by some of the patterns of behavior that I'm seeing within the FDA and the resignations and the different things that are out there. Um, and so being a bit concerned about what's going on internally, um, at the moment, you know, while I've done my best to, you know, cede my trust to the FDA, they're not showing up as the model agency that I'm looking for. So what I'm doing is I'm imagining what that model agency would look like. And then I'm actually like building that model agency as an alternative, right? We're handpicking our own national experts and we're setting up our own, you know, timeline and we're setting up our own like ways that the experts are sharing information and polling each other. And, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be an evolutionary process, but again, by modeling what it what it would look like, what it could look like, eventually this entity that we are creating, it will be gaining the trust of the public because it'll be the public that'll be a participatory part of this whole process with this parallel, you know, advisory council that we're creating. You get what I'm saying? So because all of, all of us as a society say, we want this, we want something like this, we want an agency, we want a process we can trust. And so we build it to order for society the way society wants it. And now this is great, like this is giving us the information we want. You know, new things come up and they're addressing it the way that we wanted it to see it addressed. So you see what I'm saying is we start to, in a sense, and that's the thing is that we start to replace old broken systems with new better systems that are designed to be able to get the feedback we want and the participation we want and just everything that everyone would want from a more evolved version of what these things would look like you know in a society a hundred years from now or a thousand years from now or however far you need to stretch your mind to imagine that we're past all this trivial stuff you know that's getting in the way of functioning at a high level Let's imagine that we actually could function at a high level. What would that look like? And let's build it for, to look like that right now. So that's kind of where we're at with it. So any any questions about that? So you know, part of it is seeing how much we can get down on video. The um, production team is stepping up big time. We're about to have our meeting to talk about how the production team in particular, Renasia and Alexis have agreed to really start um, processing a lot of video for us. Cause you know, I'm just like the video I just shared with you at that, you know, 10 minutes right there that I just shared with you, you know, can be pulled out and edited and put out there as to like, this is part of what we're doing with our process, right? And that can be shared with the experts so they can understand where we're going with this and that sort of thing. So that doesn't need to now be something that I spend time writing out and all of that sort of stuff. Like it came out of my mouth, it's on video. Now Renasia and Alexis and the others that are gonna be working can go and edit that, process it, cut it down, 
put it out on YouTube, put it out on Instagram, put it out on Facebook. We can share it in emails. It'll start building out the content on our website. So that's where we're going with a lot of this now is just starting to take all these different ideas and map them all out into a really logical flow in a way that people can start to really tangibly understand what we're doing and how we're creating solutions that are relevant for them. Like when people start to understand like, yeah, I wanna trust the FDA more and I can't trust the FDA right now because of these broken systems. So what's my alternative? Oh, you know, I mean, there's this organization that can create solutions that could allow something like that to exist. Not only are we creating it, but we're creating a whole system that facilitates the creation of that. So anybody could show up and create an alternative to the FDA whenever they want it. You know, and there could be all kinds of different competing models of, you know, experts and all of that. But now we're creating a marketplace to allow all of that to exist. You guys get all of that. So there's a lot of layers I'm adding in there now, but I want you guys just to get all the, the bigger aspects of where we go with all of this. And it's not just like a one shot deal, any of these things that we're doing. They're all, you know, really specific models of how we use our systems and how, you know, our systems um, get implemented in the real world, basically. So any questions or comments about any of that? It's pretty cool when you think about it that way, right? <laughs> when you think about where this leads to as we keep pushing it out into society. So great. Um, is there anything else on the agenda, Katie? I wanna make sure we're covering everything we're supposed to cover. I guess oh, really have... Johnny's yeah. questions. Yeah, yeah the, the poll questions. Okay, perfect. Um, the thing about the poll questions, let me, I've shared this with most of you and um, I shouldn't say most of you, I've shared this in different meetings. So let me just quickly go over it. And I shared it with Johnny earlier and Johnny's going to keep working on it. He's really getting um, good with the Google survey. So that's what we're going to use in the short term to be able to, you know, until our systems are more mature for this week, we'll use the Google survey. So we're going to um, ask like, I'm imagining a five question survey as the first survey to just make it really easy for people. And that the first three questions are like, yes, no, or true, false. Like, do you think that the Pfizer vaccine ought to be authorized for children five to 11 years old? You know, just very straightforward, simple question, yes, no. And then be able to get, you know, polling from the experts that were polling about where they stand. Is it 95% of experts? Is it 98%? Is it 100%? Is it 70%? You know, what is the percentage of experts that think that? And then, so we'll have like three of those questions. And then maybe like two questions that, you know, on a scale from, you know, one to five, how concerned are you about X, you know, five being very concerned, zero being not concerned at all, you know, whatever it might be. And then, you know, just some kind of multiple choice or rate this on a scale of one to 10 or whatever it's going to be. So that's like the short version of our survey. And then once they complete that very short survey that takes them like no time, like two minutes or less, then if they want, they can fill out a more in-depth survey where that we're getting their opinions like, you know, what ways do you think the FDA could be improving its process or any kinds of things that we're just looking for them to provide some kind of answer. So right now, um, Johnny's been working on developing some questions. I've been working on some developing some questions, but it's really up to the team, um, in particular, the research team to really be able to, you know, brainstorm and think about the questions. And we, we do have to finish up now because we do need to have the production team um, really have a, a full meeting today as well. But let's, in the chat, let's share these types of questions. And I want to ask everybody here, can everybody here please um, share at least three different questions into the chat so that we can choose from a lot of different questions? Can I get a thumbs up from everybody that can commit to sharing at least three questions. I've got Alexis and Sabah. Um, Johnny, you're already doing it. I know Katie is doing it. Renasia, can we get a thumbs up from you as well to share at least three questions? Uh, yeah, you can. I'm my I almost stepped away from my phone, so that's okay. why I couldn't do it. But I okay. no worries. Okay, great, perfect, awesome. So that's great. We we really want to come up with our final questions by tomorrow 
sometime because it's going to be Thursday that we're going to start emailing the experts. We're going to do our best to email everybody Thursday and Friday so that can give them the weekend to maybe respond. And, you know, Tuesday is when the presentation is. So ideally, we're going to have, you know, a good decent number of responses from expert the experts by Tuesday so that when we're giving our presentation, we can say, you can go to vaccineconsiderations.com right now and you can see you know, 43 experts that have all shared, you know, where they stand on these issues, including, you know, some video, original video content, whatever it's going to be, but you guys get the idea of it. So this is what we're, you know, working to do to pull off. So that's what all of the data entry that you guys are doing is leading to. So thank you so much to the research team for, you know, being willing to take that on. And then also thank you, Johnny, for sharing the doc there for the survey. That's great. Um, and then also for um, to support Sabah, you know, let's not just make this Sabah's uh, presentation, but let's have this be a research team presentation that Sabah is the one that's delivering the presentation, but let's make this a collaborative effort to be able to have your input and your thoughts and your, you know, articles, background. There's a lot of background research that we're going to share on the website that's going to you know not make the cut for the three or the five minute presentation but it's going to go on the website so the so the research team can really be integral in that as well and perhaps we'll talk about that more on thursday i think between now and thursday you'll be really you know into the data entry so thank you for that and then so let's actually let's plan on it that way so from now until our meeting on Thursday, our team meeting on Thursday. Let's just get all the data entry we can done between now and then. And it's, it, hopefully we can get the whole 200 done by then. And then if we can get the whole 200 done by then, then we can focus more on the research, you know, for the presentation and all that. So sound good to everybody? Yeah, good plan. Okay, are you guys, uh, thank you, Alexis. I appreciate the thumbs up and the claps. Um, are you guys enthused by what we're doing? Is this exciting that, you know, we're engaging with the FDA and we're being a part of this national, you know, discourse that's going on and, and in many ways taking a leadership role amongst the national discourse and organizing all the experts to be able to provide, you know, a voice that isn't existing in our society right now. I'll just end with this, you know, for those of you that didn't see, there was only two presenters at the at the meeting you know that we presented at that katie and i presented at last friday two presenters out of 20 slots there was opportunity for 20 different outside organizations to present and only two ended up being there so you really it really um i, I it's amazing. <laughs> Just leave it at that. It's amazing that we're that that's where we're at as a society, and not only that the FDA is structured this way, but that our society has just gone along with it, right? That no one's calling them out on it, that nobody's having anything to say, that nobody's like, where where is the engagement of our society? You know, where are all the people that are on television now when we're actually getting down to deciding things? But that's a whole other story. Thank you guys so much, research team. Let me let Katie have the last word, but thank you so much, everybody, for all the great and hard work and doing a great job. Yeah, let's definitely give some claps all around for everybody. Great job, great job, research team. Let's keep rocking it. This is our week. Let's be champions. Go team. See you guys, for those of you leaving. Production team on deck now. See you, Sava. See you, Johnny. Uh, I'm adding references to the proposal. I'll send to you once again after once I'm done with it. Yes. Okay, great, great. Yeah, let's keep in touch tonight, Sava, because we want to. Um, um, I'll help you with the logistics of emailing it and everything. So we'll go through all of that later. Um, so you're going to be available throughout the evening, right? Midnight, midnight Eastern is when it's due. Hopefully I'll have mine done earlier than that. I don't know when you think you'll have yours done, but we'll talk about it after this meeting. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break now. Alexis and Katie, Maria is here. See you later, Sabah. Hey, Maria, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good, good. We just ran over a few minutes, so 
let me just run out to take a break like I think Alexis and Katie and Renasia are and then we'll we'll pick up at 705 okay awesome okay great thank you <laughs>